You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. Someone to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale: Grace's Path. So the last place we left off. Oh man, I just love that picture. It is so amazing. So we are on chapter three for her special place. So. Marion had another had a little bit of a breakdown because we took her back to her place and Grace couldn't change back So she was pretty much a lot less monster the entire time So Marion brought out the brought out the juice And she needs some alone time. So we're walking off to the lock anyway guys just sit back and enjoy the video and let's jump right into it <clears throat> All right But Grace is no monster is she? That's such a beautiful peach. That's such a beautiful peach that's probably gonna be the thumbnail. What happened in there? Should I be worried about Marion? It feels like we abandoned her. I asked her if she was alright. Grace drops my hand and looks more, it looks away. She told me I frightened her and asked that I leave. My stomach drops, then a lump leaks into le leaps back into my throat. No, she wouldn't. Well, she did. I don't want to talk about it. I do. You have to figure this out. Not now. I just want to get back to the water. Wait, stop. Nope. She's grumpy. She's grumpy. Grace holds and turns to face me. What can I do, Malcolm? I can't make her unafraid of me. It's awful. I already feel sick to my stomach. First my mother, then my father, then my sisters. I have nobody. You have me. For how long? You will been leave too. I know it. Everyone I love, gone. Stop. Take hold of her hand, and I'm relieved she doesn't try to pull away. Grace, you're being dramatic. I'm here for you. You. I won't leave. I promise. You can't promise that. I can. I am. Right now. She opens her eyes and looks deep into mine, as if searching for any reason not to trust me. I hold her stare, if only to try and prove my honesty. You have me. I stop short of expressing anything else. I can't tell her I love her. I can only let her know I won't leave her alone. My heart and head know. My heart and head know that much to be true. Grace squints and frowns. I want to believe that, but I'll be fine on my own too, Malcolm. Don't mind my complaints. I don't mind anything about you, Grace. Oh, really? I've seen the way you look at my tail. You're not keen on it, are you? <laughs> I think it's charming, and I like it. It suits you. Hmph. Grace scoffs, still frowning. Not sure I buy that, but I do appreciate it. <laughs> God. Ah! <laughs> she swings it to and fro, as if to catch my eye, which it certainly does. For once, Grace yields, batting her eyelashes at me. It's a bit clumsy and forced, but no less alluring. I do appreciate now how we... I do appreciate how new we both are at trying to foster anything more than friendship. At least we're learning together. So pretty. Pretty tail. Hmm. I just resist the urge to boop the snoot. Don't boop the snoot! Come with me. I want to show you something. Is it your vagina? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Where are we headed? I'm thinking of all the chores I need done, not to mention my unattended grandmother, the one who I vowed to watch over since my return. I also think of the fun grace I recently enjoyed. <sighs> Someplace very hidden. Don't you want to go? Then lead on. <laughs> I think I'd follow you anywhere at this point, Grace. It gets a smirk that melts my heart. I hope she's starting to understand how much I care for her. Even if this isn't true love, a piece of my heart now belongs with this. Now belongs with her, whether she wants it or not. Good. Let's go. Zoop. She takes off running, and I have to hightail it to keep up. Ironic, since I'm not the one with the tail. I wonder if I'll ever be able to keep up with her antics. And where is she taking me? I've seen the depths of the lock and the jewels of its coast. What else could it hold? Hmm. I wonder what else it could hold, eh? Let's see. Oh, 
Oh, such pretty music. Sure enough, she brings me to the water's edge and dips her feet in, turning back to make sure I'm there. Come on, we're going under. Again? You still trust me, right? Against most better judgment, I actually do. I have no reason to, right? This time, I'm prepared. I expect adventure. Nothing less from this girl. I strip down to my knickers to avoid drenching all my clothes again. She licks her lips, her tongue curling all the way around her snout. That's my brave soldier. Grab hold of my tail, then, and hold on tight. She sets her jaw, tying the ends of her kerchief tightly beneath it. Over the top, and down we go. Sploosh. Yep. Sploosh. I believe this is the one where they find... Oh yeah, I'm not going to spoil it. There's a picture of it on the uh, website. And we dive headfirst into the freezing lock, and let the icy sensation strike through me. It goes from a frigid burn to an aching heat, radiating from my grasp or tail up into my head and down into my toes. It's familiar, but no less overwhelming. The waters of the lock swirl past us as Grace takes us farther and farther out from shore. The sides of her tail are slippery, but its ridge top, its ridge top offers a better grip. It's all I can do to clutch on, buffeted by the currents created by her fast pumping flipper feet. <laughs> Ooh, and the sounds of the deep. The lock, the lock is probably pretty deep. My ears pop as we go deeper, the cold water enveloping us both. Even so, it miraculously warms me instead of chilling me to the bone. She pauses our dive periodically to lock lips with mine and fill my lungs with air. I've seen the surface of this lock almost every day since we were born. It's still hard to believe we're actually swimming beneath it. I doubt my astonishment will ever fade. Is this really my reality now? I glance over at Grace, who manages to keep a huge grin on her face even as the water attempts to push us back. She glides against the tide with ease as if she's navigated these murky waters her whole life. She loves this. All of this. This momentum and resistance. The hypnotic push and pull of the water, of her life. Of us. Still we swim, calming my thoughts with the low murmur of water rushing around my head. Deeper and deeper we go. Finally, her body slithers to a halt, her torso twirling with the current. She's pointing, motioning where I ought to look. There's nothing to see. We're surrounded by gloom. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I got up not too long ago. The grace navigates down here is beyond me. Everything around us looks the same, for I know we could be halfway to the to the Hebrides by now. We communicate silently, short stares and nods of the head. Part of me now hoping we should share we could share some kind of muffled whale language with soft moans and humming calls. Instead, it's visual cues that keep us in sync. A wave, a twist of the shoulder. Nothing special, but it reminds me that despite my body being however many fathoms deep, I'm still human. At least for now. Don't think I can handle a tail. What on earth would I tell Gran? I shake my head, swirling my wandering thoughts away with the eddies. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, never mind, that might be a thumbnail. Hey, I found a fun thumbnail! Oh, that's so cool. Around a family of barrel jellies larger than Bulgar's barrel belly, and out the mark emerges a shape. Oh, God, I love the way that sentence rolled out. Grace grins even wider, her teeth glinting, and I know that this is the what this is what she wanted to show me. Oh, my nose! My nose! Yeah, let's explore the damn sunken ship. It's a small vessel that has sunk to the lake bottom. It doesn't appear to be new, either. I can tell from the shape that the ship is older than either of us. Oh, that coffee's good. She presses her muzzle to my mouth once more, breathing sweet air into my chest. This particular underwater kiss is less about function and all about passion. I'm dizzy, and it's not entirely due to the depth. What the heck? In a sharp tug, and we dart off toward the toward the wreck. Beautiful game. Oh god, that's cool. Whoa, wait, there's no way there's still air in here. No way, no way. This has been sunk a while. There's no way there's air in here. I like how that is the thing of the, the flaw of logic that bothers me in this game and not the people turning into animals or, cre or mythical creatures. 
Grace guides me through the hold and up into and up into a small opening. As my head pokes through it and into the bridge, I'm shocked to find myself surrounded by air. This gotta be old, musty, nasty smelling air too. Amazingly, an air pocket is preserved in the wheelhouse, despite years of abandonment and neglect. The water has seeped through in, some, in only some places, leaving a few water stains and large puddles. Patterns play on the floor as light from the surface dimly filters through the wide pilot's windows. A large ship's wheel stands out in the gloom. This is my special place, hidden away. Grace's head popped up next to mine. Your secret? Yes, my secret. It's remarkable. I'm very honored that you brought me here. You should be. Come on, let's show him. Let me show you around. Okay. Back into the water. Ooh. Crab, crab, crab. We pulled back under, and we traveled all throughout the hollow hull, worn from its lengthy rest under sea. Hello, crab. Say hello to the crab. From port to starboard, stern to bow, there isn't much to see. Empty cabins long rotted to their frames, a hold bar barren of cargo except for a few scuttling crabs. But I can tell Grace is overjoyed at sharing this precious spot with someone. I suppose one person's lonely retreat could be another private, another's private haven. Mm hmm I agree with that. That is true. Wish I had a little spot like that. That'd be nice. Maybe not a lake or anything like that. Kinda perilous to get there. We surface again in the bridge, and she hefts herself up onto the floor before lifting me up out of the water like I don't weigh a thing. Oof! Wow, Grace, this is really something. Isn't it just? How did you find it? Oh, I stumbled on this wreck years ago when I was diving for seashells. Been coming back ever since. Wait, years ago? You were swimming this far, this far, this deep before you had flippers. She laughs, shaking her head. How do you think I got enough shells to line the church pews when we were younger? <laughs> I'll never forget how loudly the women screamed when they sat. That was you? Grace beams with pride. She couldn't have been older than five or six. A natural-born rascal, it would seem. I'll never forget the look of horror on my mother's face when it happened. The memory brings a smile to my face, and it takes a moment to circle back to the revelation at hand. It's could seem that your sisters and I have seriously underestimated your swimming talents for a very, very long time. Talent is an understatement. For a girl her age, for anyone, diving in this lock is nothing short of a superhuman. Has she been special like this all along? I told you, Malcolm. This was meant to be. Mm -hmm. And I brought you here because I do think you know me best. Here, take a seat. I have more to show you. Oh, I wonder what she's going to show him. There are no seats to take. I settle for the floor while Grace walks over to the helm and grabs something out from behind it. Tell me something. Oh! A chest! Look at that, a chest. Oh, and a wooden box. She drags a beaten old trunk into place between us. Here it is! Go on! Open it! My curiosity is piqued. What has she found? Jewelry? Gold? Visions of sparkling treasure flashed through my mind. My hands trembled a little as they worked their latches. What do we got? Oh. Old stuff. Knickknacks. Mementos. I left the lid to find disappointment. The trunk is filled to the brim with knickknacks and bric-a-brac. A heap of items that she's obviously been collecting for some time. What uh, is it? My stash! My goods! My beloved belongings! Oh dear. If only your sisters know. It seems Grace's collecting habits have expanded far beyond seashells now. I stare at all the stuff before me, not seeing much other than junk. A rusty metal plate. Some threadbare clothing. A stuffed animal that's been, that has seen better days. The Grace takes to the pile like a, queen of two, like a queen to her riches. It's all very interesting. Grace runs her hands through the clutter, showing it off. It's not junk, I swear! They're antiques! Not just common things, all found right here. From the center of the heap, she yanks out a crumpled flyer with torn edges, one that's been smothered, one that's been smoothed over in an attempt to flatten it back out. Here, take a look at this. Ooh, that's cool. I do. On the front, above the logo of an old cruise line, who flamingos beckon us to join them in their water-stained tropical paradise. Isn't it beautiful? Well, it certainly looks inviting. We should go. 
can't take a boat there. We're gonna swim there. If she's joking, if she's joking, she's playing it very straight. I can't imagine up and leaving for some tropical island, especially so soon after getting home. Uh, what with the war? I'm not sure the cruise lines are even operating yet. Uh... Bah! Who needs a ship when you can swim? I lift up the pamphlet and open it to hide my face, so Grace doesn't see my skepticism. Out from between the folds drops a worn photo. I pick it up, thankful for the opportunity to change the subject. Ooh, Ooh one second, guys. Gonna sneeze. Oh, Lord, that sneeze. Oh, two of them, so big. In the picture stands a beautiful young woman, hands on her hips, smiling broadly. Who is this? Beats me. I found it with all the other stuff. I wonder if that's Alana. Do you imagine she went down with the ship? Oh, how horrible. I would guess she was the lover of one of the men on the boat. It's common to carry the picture of the woman you love with you, isn't it? Of course. I think back to all the soldiers who carried pictures of girlfriends and wives at home. Us single folk were always a bit envious of them. A few bachelors even took to carrying magazine clippings of models and actresses just to show to, all, just to, show to others. Or anyone to ask who was waiting on, waiting on their return. What picture did you have, Malcolm? Me? I carried a photo of my mother. If anyone asked, I told them I wanted to get back to bring her home some French perfume. Did you bring her any? My stomach drops. I had bought a nice little bottle of of your a nice little bottle of your de parfum perf, of your de perfume. Not your, hold on. your de perfume. A nice little bottle of your de perfume for mother in Paris. But it passed, I passed it off to a fellow soldier when I got word that my parents had left Octa Craig. I didn't, actually. <laughs> oh god. Mm. I didn't, actually. Hmm. Oh. Oh, well, you can now. I can ferry you up to the sign. I can fire you up the sign to Paris. You can buy us all the pastries we can eat. Grace seems intent on bringing up the subject of travel, much to my chagrin. No, I think my traveling days are over. Really? Why? It's not as easy swimming in the ocean, Grace. There's more to it than that. Not anymore. You can as easily hop on my back and I, as I can swim the English Channel. You're dreaming now, Grace. Yes, I'm dreaming. Look at Jessie. She's living her dream right now. As far as we know... What if she's miserable? Oh, stop. We could do it. Go anywhere, anytime. Get away from it all. Just you and me. There's a little something called practicality, Grace. I happen to be a big fan of it. She snorts at me. You and Marion both. I'm entirely sick of being practical. Practical gets you nowhere. When I hear Marion's name, I think I realize why Grace is so suddenly keen on a vacation getaway. Grace, her sister. She's a lot on her plate. A form to manage two firecracker siblings to support. I'm not saying she'll come completely around, but give her time, she'll adjust. <laughs> Malcolm, I know Marion. It's a lost cause. Come now, she raised you, Grace. Cut her some slack. She doesn't take change well. She's the world through a very narrow lens. Even so, she'll still see it's you, eventually. She cares very, very much for you. Sometimes to a fault. Is it such a bad thing? All I'm saying is, it'd be nice if she opened her world up a bit. Let loose. It's as if I see an actual light bulb blow above Grace's head. Find someone else to care for. Pardon? She wears a wide to the grin. The wheels are already turning. What if we find Mary and someone to love? Oh no. Oh no. Um, don't you think she already has enough irons to the fight in the fire? That'd do her a world of good to find more things that make her happy. You know, instead of a martyr. I'm having a difficult time following her logic. How exactly do you intend to play matchmaker? Tell her to go to the stag and nanny and wait for someone to buy her a drink. Marion's not bound to be very responsive to that right now. I'm serious. Love is a powerful thing. Malcolm, you've shown me how powerful love really is, so maybe I won't just tell her. Oh. Oh, God. That's a good one. Look at that. Damn, that tells me. Grace crawls over the trunk to me, coming perilously close. <laughs> Maybe I'll show her. I catch my breath, and I'm extremely confused. But you're going to have to explain. Gray strokes my legs and smiles mischievously. Marion just needs to find a soulmate, and then she'll come to understand what I'm going through. 
it's a it's a transformation adding to her adding addling her brain with her new wide hips and her ampler chest in full view it's certainly addling mine i swallow deeply is that right it's like a quest to find your sister a boyfriend yes a hunt let's get your sister laid <laughs> well I question her approach. I do believe anyone would benefit from having a close friend. One to confide in, trust, among other things. But I'm reasonably sure, but I'm reasonably sure Grace, Grace no longer has her sister in mind. Oh, God. And then Malcolm died. Oh! Oh, it's just like the Jesse scene. I love it. I love it. Grace pushes me down on my back. When my head hits the wood board, I have a flash of what's uh, what's about to happen next. Ah, uh, yeah. There you go. That is going to be the thumbnail. <laughs> oh, that's so good. All right, guys. You're going to have to wait to the next episode to find out what happens. But I want to thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.